The Road to El Dorado is a great movie, but at the same time, it is a movie that is about two white dudes going to an indigenous culture and manipulating the people for wealth, fame, and of course, women. Unfortunately for you, however, you are maidenless. And literally shows an example of how the white man treated the new world whenever it came over to discover it and more importantly, take it over. But there are some bangers in this movie, at least to lighten it up by the wonderful Elton John. And of course, the movie has a great ending. But El Dorado was actually loosely based on the real myth of El Dorado, kind of the same concept as Atlantis. And apparently the reason El Dorado, the myth was created was actually the pure obsession and fantasy of Europeans having the dire need for gold and the desire to conquer lands for monetary value. And actually the South American version of the myth was quite different as El Dorado to them was considered to be a man so rich and powerful he covered himself in gold from head to toe each morning and then washed it off in a sacred lake each evening. And not only that, but there's actually some evidence of a culture known as Muisca that produced a mixture of gold, silver, and copper, which was a material known as Tumbaga. And as the Muisca people saw all of this gold material material as a more spiritual thing, the Europeans saw this as kind of a material gain. So the myth does have a little bit of legs behind it, but we aren't here to talk about the history. We're here to talk about the movie, baby. So this movie is actually sort of a continuation of the concept of the road to style of movies. There were a few movies in the past that had a similar concept of two wrongdoers getting shunned by the town that they were in, sent away, they find a new world and stuff happens. Want a break from the ads? And this movie is a story that follows two anti-heroes that accidentally stumble upon an adventure that leads them to grow as people and change their ways. You know what I'm talking about, baby. Character development. Yeah. And honestly, I loved this movie as a kid. And after rewatching it, I still consider this to be good. It's just a downright charming movie that'll put a smile on your face, mostly because of a horse. Every movie needs a horse companion. 10 out of 10 horse. And just like we talked about in previous videos about Atlantis and Treasure Planet, this movie actually was a complete failure on release, not only in the box office, but also critically. And it had to do with many different things. The timing, of course, you know, the market was completely flooded with animated movies like Lion King 2, Tarzan, Mulan, and of course, The Emperor's New Groove, which is probably one of my favorite movies when I was younger. It was just the big boom of animated 3D movies. And not only that, but critics actually were very brutal on this movie at the time, and it had a lot to do with the adult humor, which there was definitely a good amount of. There was even somewhat of a sex scene in this movie. I don't know if you guys remember that, but there is. And I know all of you horny weirdos out there probably got your first boner for Shell. All right, calm down. She's not real. But she's real to me. But this combination really let it gain traction later down the road and become a classic to many people, especially on the internet in the timeless medium of memes. But before we get into this video, let me ask you something important. Are you going bald? Are you balding? Well, let me tell you about something that will help you out before it all goes away. Today's sponsor is Keeps. It's an online subscription service that helps men keep their hair. They offer clinically proven treatments to combat the symptoms of hair loss and treatments are sent directly to your door. Did you guys know that two thirds of guys will experience hair loss by the time that they are 35? Am I experiencing that? Uh, uh, maybe. You need to get to taking care of it before the balding situation ever begins. And Keeps even has 24-7 support with expert medical advisors, prescribers, and care specialists to make sure that your hair goals are achieved. Hair loss stops with Keeps. That's right, to get 50% off your first order, head to the link in the description to get 50% off your first order for your hair loss treatment. That's Keeps.com slash Bionic Pig. Go there now and get it fixed before it's too late. So let's get into the movie. The movie starts out with a banger song from none other than the wonderful Elton John, which I actually had no idea that Elton John did the music for this movie, which obviously makes it a hundred times better. So the movie follows two partners, Tulio and Miguel, who are thieves and scam artists. And at the beginning, we see them scamming people for money with loaded dice. And one of the men in a last ditch effort to win all of the money back bets a map, a map to El Dorado. However, they wanted to use their dice, but luckily in the end, 
and they did end up winning. But their loaded dice fell out and it kept falling on seven. They got found out pretty quick. So they end up having this rehearsed back and forth scuffle that they use as a distraction to get away, showing that they always have a plan for when they're caught. And I know it seems kind of pointless to bring up their little distraction plan, but this is important later on in the movie. So they end up running away, getting chased by guards, but they end up getting away by hiding in barrels. But unfortunately, these barrels were getting put on a ship that is going to the new world. And this ship is led by none other than Cortez, a ruthless captain who is planning on conquering the new world. And actually, Hernan Cortez is loosely based off an actual Spanish conquistador who led an expedition that caused the complete fall of the Aztec Empire and brought large portions of what is now known as the mainland of Mexico under the rule of King of Castile. So, like I said in the beginning, this movie has some dark historical similarities of the Spanish conquest of the Aztec Empire. Not really something I'd put in a kid's movie, but you know, children aren't going to be sc scounging through historical books being like, oh, oh God. But both of them were found as stowaways upon the boat of Cortez, and he stated that he will not tolerate stowaways and mentioned that they're going to be flogged and then flogged some more. Here, wait, what, what is the definition of flogged? Oh, oh, God. That sucks. The two of them spent many days and nights potentially getting flogged over and over aboard the ship until they finally make their escape with the help of Horse, who loves apples. I mean, yeah, sure, his name is Altiva, but whatever. So Altiva loves apples so much it ends up jumping into the ocean and climbing into the boat with them. Dear God, I cannot imagine how much horse shit is in that tiny boat. I mean, have you seen horse shit before? It ain't little. And that's a little boat. That's a lot of poopy. It's a lot of poop. So after a while, they find themselves washed up on a beach and instantly run into a skeleton. <laughs> However, before they run off in fear, Miguel uses the map that they won before they landed themselves on the ship and notice that this island has all of the starting landmarks for this map to El Dorado. So gradually, Miguel wears down Tulio with the idea that they could just steal a bunch of gold and then take it back to Spain and become rich and famous. So they blaze a trail into the forest to find the lost city of El Dorado with, again, another banger from Elton John. So they follow the map and ends up at what seems to be just a giant rock, but then female. Oh my God, female. Oh. So this female who seems to be getting chased runs into them and the guards who were chasing her take all of them back to the entrance of what turns out to be none other than El Dorado. And the people there speak English, which totally makes complete sense. Indigenous people all around the world who have never seen the modern civilization at all naturally speak English. It's common knowledge. Don't question it. And then the man, the myth, the legend, green magic using Zekel Khan comes out to announce that he predicted the coming of gods. He's like, yeah, told you so. And he just so happens to believe that these gods are Tulio and Miguel, and they instantly take that and run with it, with their first decree is protecting Shell from punishment from stealing something for the village. Mostly because she is completely aware that they aren't actual gods. I mean, that, that's, that's an important thing. And the way that they convinced everyone in the entire city that they are gods is just a complete coincidence meme. Conveniently, while Miguel and Tulio are getting in a heated argument, a volcano starts to erupt until Tulio yells stop, then it gets sucked right back in. This is the kind of shit I like about this movie. The complete nonsense some of the scenes have just make no sense at all, but it gives this movie character and I like. And we instantly catch on to is the fact that the high priest kind of hates the chief and everyone in the Golden City. So, you know, we already kind of pinpointed the bad guy right off the bat. So they go into their new temple and we get to see the meme in all of its glory. Both. 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 Both is good. So Tulio and Miguel are laughing and gawking at the fact that the entire city is a bunch of suckers and they're going to steal all of their gold only to be overheard by none other than that teenage boner fuel that is Shell. And she ends up making a deal with them that she will help them learn the ways of her people if they all agree to let her in on their little scam that they have going on. So reluctantly, they agree in fear of, you know, being found out. And after rewatching, I can see how people would consider this a bit too sexual for children as we get the scene of Shell kind of oogling over the guys taking off their clothes. There's some parts of this movie that give me a little bit of cringe Wedding Crashers vibes at moments, like where Miguel starts purring at the thought of her, you know, just bros being bros, you know? <laughs> and then we get another slapper from Elton John. It's tough to be a god.
I'm sorry to hear that. But they do a little montage and inner thought process of the words of being a god to all these people while they gradually fall into the enjoyment and the pleasures of it instead. And I thought it was very interesting that one of the lyrics literally say, be a legend, be a cult. Again, some of this movie has a little bit of weird vibes to it. I mean, they're literally saying they're becoming a cult. So where we have the chief of El Dorado giving them a huge feast, a big party to celebrate their welcoming, the high priest, Zekel Khan, is going to give him um, a sacrifice where he literally is just going to throw a man to his death. However, they end up stopping this by saying uh, the stars aren't aligned for this tribute. However, with their unknowingness of the culture, uh, they accidentally say that they want it to be sent to Shibalba, which happens to be the spirit world, which they end up just throwing the gold over into the abyss. But Shell ends up saving the gold by telling the chief that they wanted to bask in the gold instead. Huzzah, gold for them. And then the next dilemma comes comes into play. They want to leave as soon as possible because, you know, the God Charade is going to be tough. However, the chief mentioned that it would take up to three days to make a boat the size that they need to carry all of this gold. And it seems Miguel is completely fine with staying. However, Tulio has a little bit of an issue with that. He wants to get out. And by now, we really start seeing the big dynamic between these two. Tulio is more of the cut and dry, play things safe, you know, have a plan for everything. Whereas Miguel is more of spur of the moment, adventurous, curious type. So they tend to balance each other out in a lot of situations, but in this situation, it does end up causing a little bit of a fissure. Tulio demands that Miguel lies low to make sure that no one catches on to the fact that they aren't gods. But, not joking, Shell just wants some dick. Yeah. Seriously, the reason that there is conflict that comes into play at this point is Shell just wants some Tulio cock and Miguel is blocking that. So she talks Miguel into enjoying the city while she ends up seducing Tulio and they have some hot sex. Penis, vagina, action, baby, sex. Yeah. So while they're having hot and sweaty animated sex. Miguel enjoys the city and starts to notice that Zekel Khan is kind of making commands as the voice of God that they themselves have not commanded at all. So Zekel's kind of going under them and, and doing bad things. And we really start to see the brutal nature of Zekel Khan. And again, we get another banger song of Elton John where Miguel is enjoying the beauty of the city and the kindness of people. And we start to notice that Miguel doesn't just fall in love with the city, but also falls in love with the people there. So we cut back to Tulio, who once again, I know, I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, but is having sex with his penis. And Zekel Khan comes in to cock block him, what a dick. And he talks to Tulio about how Miguel should not be with humans because humans are awful. They tell lies. They're cruel, disgusting beings like rats and spiders. Which, I mean, literally is everything that Miguel and Tulio are right now. And yeah, Zekel Khan does have somewhat of a point that, you know, humans aren't perfect. You know, they, they can be bad sometimes. But I think his logic of how to deal with this problem is a little bit, should I say, Zekel bad. But he believes that the way to have people respect you and worship you is to rule by fear. So he wants Tulio to devour the essence of a few humans, you know, just to strike a little fear in all of them. Just a quick little essence suck. And then we get even more problems as guess who shows up on the island? None other than that Cortez, the ruthless conquistador here to take the land for his own. And it seems he himself is also looking for El Dorado as he's using the same path that they used. And to make matters worse, Zekel Khan pits two gods against his finest team of athletes in a game of Ulama Litsli, which is a sport with ritual associations played by the Aztecs. There's actually a lot of cool history stuff in this movie, not gonna lie. So anyway, how they end up winning the game is they do what they do best, they cheat. Somehow they end up using an armadillo that is sentient as a ball to win the game. And once again, Zekel Khan's like, bro, you wanna like sacrifice all these guys since you completely embarrassed all of them? Let's just kill them, fuck them. And that causes Miguel to blow up a little bit, being like, bro, you need to stop with the sacrifices. We don't want them. Okay, we don't want to kill nobody. But, however, in that big rant, Zekel Khan notices that Miguel has a cut on his forehead that is bleeding, which, as all god knowers know, gods don't bleed, but they do piss. Oh boy, they piss. So then comes that fissure I was talking about earlier. Miguel fell in love with El Dorado so much he realizes he wants to stay. And not only that, but it seems that the chief was completely aware that Miguel was not a god this whole time. I mean, he doesn't say it directly, but he gives like a little 
little side comment to Miguel that shows that he is completely aware of what is going on, which also shows how freaking nice the chief is. Like he could easily just like, you know, sacrifice him as Zekel Khan did. However, Tulio and Shell are still on their plan to leave and Miguel ends up listening on a conversation of him telling Shell to just forget about Miguel, which it was kind of out of context, but whatever, we need some conflict here. We get it. Oh yeah, meanwhile, Zekel Khan is uh, becoming a Jaguar to take over the city and kill Miguel and Tulio, so... Yeah, we're, we're going to have a little Jaguar attack uh, of the city. So the Jaguar ends up going for Miguel and Tulio. We get a little bit of lava level and Jack and Daxter type shit. Then as they are about to meet their demise hanging off a steep ledge into the abyss, they do a callback to the beginning of the movie when they had their little distraction dispute in the beginning to, to throw everyone off. But in the beginning of the movie, this was all a farce, which don't get me wrong, it did start as a farce to distract Zekel Khan. But in this instance, everything that they're saying is an actual argument that they're having. They're completely airing out their complaints with each other and are actually getting mad at each other. But using that farce that they normally lean to whenever they're trying to get out of a bad situation as more of an excuse to start the argument in the first place. But like the partnership, they are always in line perfectly because at the end of their argument, they do a quick little double punch to the face of Zekel Khan. Then they miraculously, with the power of plot armor, survive as Zekel Khan falls into the abyss. But as it turns out, that abyss ain't as dangerous as it looks because it's just a channel of water that leads directly out into the forest. So Zekel Khan survives and of course runs directly into none other than Cortez. And so Zekel Khan tells them that he knows where the entrance to El Dorado is. So basically he's leading Cortez to El Dorado to literally just massacre the entire city. Which you know um, is bad news because you know, we know how history turned out whenever white man found the natives. You know, And there is a sad a bitter song at the end where Miguel and Tulio have to kind of part ways, but they're parting ways in a very bitter, angry manner. And as Tulio is about to shove off on his trip and leave Miguel forever, they notice in the distance the sound of gunshots and smoke clouds. I don't really know what they're shooting at or, or why there's a bunch of smoke. Are they just burning the forest? But obviously both Miguel and Tulio realize if Cortez shows up, everyone's gonna die. They can't do shit. They come up with a plan, and I love this part of the movie because it really shows character development. You know what I'm talking about, like in the beginning of the video. Character development, babe. Tulio decides to sacrifice all of this gold, which was the entire purpose of going here in the first place in order to protect everyone here. He's planning on ramming the ship of gold into the pillars at the entrance and block anyone off from coming in. But to get that much speed, they need to use one of these huge pillars to make a big wave to push them into the tunnel. But when the whole plan goes into place, the ship is moving way too slow because Tulio can't figure out how to get the sail unstuck. So Miguel doing a quick little swan dive into the ship he grabs a sail, pulls it down, and he's like, yeah, I'm coming with you. Just Fight. kidding. You got baited. We're partners. So they knock the pillars and block off the entrance and save all of El Dorado. And at the end, we get a little funny moment as we see Zekel Khan get taken away, which I mean, I guess it's not really funny because he's getting taken away to be completely enslaved by a ruthless Cortez. But I mean, I, I guess at the end of the day, he kind of deserves it. But they all kind of wave goodbye to him as like, hey, fuck you. You got screwed. Your own fault. Get so there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, the wonderful movie of El Dorado. Honestly, fantastic movie. I still love it to this day. Yeah, obviously there's some dark historical factual things in there that really is depressing, but I mean, hey, it's a part of history and that's kind of how it is. I do like the anti-hero character development of, of, you know, bad dudes turning over a new leaf, becoming good guys at the end. I kind of like that whole concept. I always have. And I feel like this movie did a great job at it. So thank you all for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe. Please follow me on Twitter. Twitter and Instagram and all my other socials and make sure to, to stay sassy, you little, you little, little, little poopers. <laughs>